service for Trinity Listwell and Atwood United Church for Sunday, January 2nd, 2022, recorded here at Atwood United Church. My name is Angie Lannon, a licensed lay worship leader with the United Church and a member here at Atwood United. Our minister, Beth Kerr, is taking a much needed break from the busyness of the Advent and Christmas season, so I will be leading the service today. Due to the rising numbers of COVID in our area, and the emergence of the fast-spreading Omicron variant, we felt that it was in the best interest of our congregations to, to move online during the Christmas season. While this last-minute decision by our worship committee was made concerning our Christmas Eve service and today's service, we will be meeting again this week to re-evaluate what the coming weeks will look like based on the current numbers in our region and, and any new restrictions put in place by the provincial government. Stay tuned to our Facebook page and our Instagram account for updates regarding this and check your email as well as, as any emails will be sent out. That being said, Atwood's edition of the January newsletter is, is going to be a little bit later as we try and, and navigate through this time and, and decide what it's going to look like for us here in Atwood. And, uh, and, and we'll get that done as soon as we can and the newsletter out as quickly as possible. So keep checking your emails because it will come. The Wednesday morning coffee hour at Trinity is still on, although it's now on Zoom at 10 a.m. Uh, anyone is welcome to, to join in if you are feeling the need for, for conversation, for discussion, um, or just feeling the need to be with other people, please join in on this coffee time. The link to to uh, um, to it, it can be found on our Facebook page and our Instagram account, and it is the same link as we use for our worship services. Our annual meetings are fast approaching, and if you are one of those people who need to send in a report, if you are in Atwood, please send in a report by Friday, January 21st, and if you are from Trinity, please send in a report by Sunday, January 30th, in order that they can be included in, in our annual reports. So let's begin. Come, all people of God, to a place where our hearts are open and ready to receive God's precious gift, to a time when sharing the news of birth and hope gives us a glimpse of a bright future. Come, let us worship and praise as we celebrate a new year, new beginnings, and new hope for the world. Come into the light of Christ. And our call to worship is written by Roddy Hamilton. The year has thinned, the light seems weaker. The year is tired and the season running out. Yet here we are in this place of life, for this place believes in things beyond time and season. We might live in the echo of stables and, and incarnation, holding on to faith in the year's last days. Yet what do we do but perform acts of renewal and birth, of baptism and hope, of seeking new life shaped in Jesus Christ? So let us gather in what the world sees as the cusp of the year, Yet we know as another day in the eternity of love. 
and celebrate who we are and who we are yet to be. Come, let us be together and worship. And let's pray. God of yesterday, today and tomorrow, with a mixture of hope and anticipation, of fear and excitement, of expectation and uncertainty, we come on this first Sunday of the new year. We don't know what 2022 holds for us. Will we have good health? Will we have job security? Will we have more restrictions and lockdowns due to COVID? Will COVID ever end? But there is also so much to look forward to. Weddings and anniversaries, births and baptisms, holidays to enjoy, friends to laugh with, families to hug, life without restrictions and distancing and masks. Whatever the year holds for us though, we trust you loving God and we place every day of this year in your care, knowing that you are with us as you have been in the past and will continue to be as we journey through this year and the years to come, caring for us with constant love. And so we place ourselves into your keeping, asking for strength, wisdom and guidance and dedicating our lives to your service through Jesus the Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. And we'll listen now to hymn uh, number 45 in Voices United, Joy is Now in Every Place. today is one of my favorites and it comes to us from John chapter 1 verses 1 to 18. It seems appropriate that as we begin a brand new year the scriptures take us back to the beginning before creation to when God's spirit hovered over the darkness and spoke the universe into existence where Jesus existed long before the angel came to Mary and the shepherds left their flocks to see the baby lying in the stable and the, and the magi came with their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. I'm reading from the Voice Bible because the imagery of Jesus, not as the word, but as the voice, stirs something within me, something powerful yet comforting. John 1, verses 1 to 18. Before time itself was measured, the voice was speaking. The voice was and is God. This celestial word remained ever present with the Creator. His speech shaped the entire cosmos. Immersed in the practice of creating, all things that exist were birthed in him. His breath filled all things with a living, breathing light, a light that thrives in the depths of the darkness, blazes through murky bottoms. It cannot and will not be quenched. A man named John, who was sent by God, was the first to clearly articulate the source of this light. The baptizer put in plain words the elusive mystery of the divine light, so all might believe through him. Some mother wondered whether he might be the light, but John was not the light. He merely pointed to the light. The true light, who shines upon the heart of everyone, was coming into the cosmos. He entered our world, a world he made, yet the world did not recognize him. Even though he came to his own people, they refused to listen and receive him. But for all who did receive and trust in him, he gave them the right to be reborn as children of God. 
He bestowed this birthright not by human power or initiative, but by God's will. The voice took on flesh and became human and chose to live alongside us. We have seen him enveloped in undeniable splendor, the one true son of the Father, evidenced in the perfect balance of grace and truth. John the Baptist testified about him and shouted, This is the one I've been telling you is coming. He is much greater than I because he existed long before me. Through this man, we all received gifts of grace beyond our imagination. You see, Moses gave us rules to live by, but Jesus the anointed offered us gifts of grace and truth. God, unseen until now, is revealed in the voice, God's only son, straight from the Father's heart. May God add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. One of my favorite hymns is in Voices United, number 563, Jesus, You Have Come to the Lake Shore. It, it's one of my favorites because of the first line in the refrain, in the refrain Oh, Jesus, with your eyes you have searched me, and while smiling have spoken my name. There are some times when those words speak so close to my heart that I actually cannot sing them. Too great is that feeling that, that I'm not worthy to have Jesus search me out and call me by name, yet at the same time full of awe that Jesus would search me out and call me by my name. Just reading those printed words in the hymn book, though, does not bring that same emotion. It is only when I sing them, when I give those words life by my voice, does that emotion arise. They become personal. They take on meaning, a meaning that sees Jesus, the, the Son of God, knowing who I am, and deliberately looks for me in the crowd. They become more than just words on the page. They become indescribable joy, a peace beyond understanding, and an all-consuming desire that everyone should feel the same. Having Jesus referred to as the voice in the passage I just read brings some of those same feelings. We know this passage probably better as the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is from the New Revised Standard Version. The Gospel of John is, is different than the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. While the first three speak more to the humanity of Jesus through his through his birth and his baptism, John's gospel speaks more to the divinity of Jesus. John's use of the, of, of the word when describing Jesus has, has been translated from the Greek word logos and perhaps has lost some of its meaning to us in the 21st century. But when John was writing this gospel, it was a rethinking of who God and Jesus were, meant to draw more people into this new religion called Christianity. It was the first century way of making Christianity more inclusive, a word that we are very familiar with today. By the time John was writing this gospel, Christianity had grown substantially and now included more Gentiles than Jews. And the, and the good news of the Messiah from the house of David, fulfilling the prophecy of the ancient scrolls of Isaiah, was lost on the Gentile population, particularly the Greeks who had made up the majority of new members. The ordinary Greek would have had no knowledge of Judaism, no knowledge of King David, no knowledge of this promised Messiah, and so reading the old scriptures would have held no meaning for them. They had to be shown Jesus in a way that they would understand. The Jews were familiar with the term, the word, the word of God. By the time of the New Testament, the Jewish population no longer understood the ancient Hebrew. It was a lost language known only to the scholars, but it was the language in which the ancient scrolls were written. And so they had to be translated into Aramaic, the language of the day. But in translating these ancient texts, 
those doing the translating felt that the phrase God said or God did seemed too personal and human. And God, in their understanding, was anything but personal or human. So they translated it to read the word of God, in essence, making God an inanimate being. Presenting Jesus as the word of God made sense to the Jewish uh, members of the early Christian church because for them it was just another name for the eternal. But not so much to the Greek members who were still learning uh, about who Jesus was until John hit on the use of the word logos to describe him and set in motion a whole new way to see God and in essence, Jesus, the son of God. Logos in Greek means word or reason or, or thought or speech. And the Greeks loved anything to do with reason, of knowing the thought behind the word. Presenting Jesus as a logos meant that they were being invited in to know what God was thinking when the creator spoke life into the world. They were invited into the mind of God and to the Greeks. That made sense. Presenting Jesus as the mind of God made Jesus someone the Greeks wanted to know about. Today, when we think of the word of God, we, we, think, of, we think of the Bible, words written on a page that we, that we may or may not understand. And so we come to church, hoping that, that in the worship leader, we, the, hoping that the worship leader will give life and understanding to these words through their voice. And it is here that we come back to the version of scripture that I read, which presents Jesus as the voice. If the mind of God became human in the form of Jesus, it's not so hard to imagine that the word of God became a voice in the person Jesus. Seeing Jesus as a voice gives us another way to think about God. The first verse of chapter one takes us back to the beginning of creation. In Genesis chapter one, we hear that the earth was a dark, formless void and God's spirit swept over the waters of the void. And then something happens. God speaks. Let there be light, God spoke, and there was. God spoke creation into existence with just the sound of his voice. A voice is a pretty powerful thing. While we may not always understand the words that accompany a voice, we can always tell what that voice is feeling. We can, we can tell if someone is scared or frightened just by the tone of their voice. There, there, there may be a a quiver in their voice. They may speak loudly and rapidly and with urgency. We can tell if someone is angry by the harsh tone of their voice. We can tell if someone is, is hesitant by the stuttering tone of their voice. And we can tell if someone is speaking words of kindness and, and comfort and love by the softness of their voice. Jesus, using the voice that was with God at the beginning, tells us something pretty amazing about the nature of God, that from the beginning of time, God has been love. And by showing God's self to humankind through the voice of Jesus, tells us that God continues to be love now and forever. I found a YouTube video that claims that scientists have been able to recreate the original voice of Jesus to a 78% to a margin of accuracy. This video is supposed to represent Jesus as he is reciting the Lord's Prayer. Amazingly, Jesus seems to have a little bit of a British accent, and it wasn't at all how I would have thought Jesus had sounded. If, if any of you um, remember Andre the Giant from, from the wrestling world, you would get an idea of what they had decided Jesus was going to sound like. But there was something missing in this, in this recording. Emotion. The kind of emotion one would expect to hear coming from Jesus as he was talking to his father, God. The kind of, of emotion that no computer generation can replicate. But it brings to mind how we talk to each other when we are in relationship. Jesus, as the voice, speaks to a personal relationship with God. Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd. And in John chapter 10 says that he is the shepherd and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger because they don't know their voice. A voice is distinct and personal. We know each other by our voices, 
especially those closest to us, hearing the voice of, of, of a parent can bring, um, can, can, can bring comfort to a scared child. Hearing the voice of our children and grandchildren can bring joy to our hearts. Hearing the voice of our partners speaking words of love to us bring us a sense of peace and security. It is in this kind of personal relationship that we get to know the voice of God because Jesus is speaking them to us all the time. But the one thing about a voice is that it makes the words come alive. Last Christmas, my granddaughter got the book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. The original animated version is, is, is one of my all time favorite Christmas shows. I mean, who can't love it when, when the Grinch with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without boxes. But it came without packages, boxes or bags. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. What if Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more? Turns out my granddaughter loves the book as much as I did, and she was always wanting me to read it to her. So on my best Boris Karloff impersonation, I would read it to her, and funny enough, she hardly looked at the pictures on the pages of the book. She would look at me as I was reading the book, using all of the expression that I could remember from the movie. And when I would finish, she would ask me to read it again. It wasn't so much the book that she was interested in, it was the voice I was using when I read it to her. Jesus as the voice gives life to the words of scripture and brings to us the face of a living God, one who breathes and moves and gives expression to everything around us. And Jesus brings to us a living God who wants to live with us. The New Revised Standard Version says that the word became flesh and lived among us. But it is the message translation that perhaps best explains John's intent. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Moving into the neighborhood means that, that you have made a conscious decision, a choice, that this is the place where you want to live. Imagine that, God choosing to live with us. Putting on a human form, all just to show us that our God is alive. Our God is a living, loving God, and our God put on skin and walked among us, ate with us, prayed with us, cried with us. And we know this because of the words Jesus spoke. We are in the last days of Christmas. Yes, we are still in the Christmas season here in the church. Thursday marks the season of Epiphany and the visit of the Magi, the, the, the wise men. But for a few days yet, we are still celebrating the miraculous birth of the Christ child. I would like to quote Elizabeth Johnson, a professor at the Lutheran Institute of Theology, who said, Of course, the baby in the manger is only the beginning of God's message to us in the word made flesh. But in this baby, we begin to see and understand the very heart of God. In the word made flesh, we see a heart so full of love for us that it will go to any length. To reach us. It will stop at nothing to make us God's own. Not even the frailty of human flesh, nor the darkness of suffering and death can keep God from us, nor us from God. End quote. The last couple of years have been challenging to say the least. As we head into the new year, as we approach the season of Epiphany where we will once again learn about the life of Jesus, may we remember Jesus the voice of God revealing to us the unseen God, showing us the heart of God and coming to live with us in human form so that we may feel firsthand the love of God. And may you know that God is ever present, always has been and always will be through all of life's challenges as well as the blessings. And as you listen to Jesus speak with the voice of God, may you too be filled with indescribable joy peace beyond understanding and an all-consuming desire that everyone should feel the same. May we too be the voice that shows God's heart and God's love to those around us as we sing the hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Oh, yeah. 
commissioning is written today by Joyce Rupp. I hope for you in this new year of 2022 that the single most significant dimension of life is your relationship with the source of goodness, who never ceases to sing love songs to your soul, that you find meaning, purpose, and vitality in what you do daily, that you treasure your loved ones and let them know how dear they are to you, that you make choices and decisions that reflect your truest self, that you look in the mirror at least once a day and smile in happy amazement, that you remember relationships are what count above all else, more than work or money or all the material things we spend so much time tending, that you live in an uncluttered manner, enjoying the freedom to be content, that you keep your sense of humor when things don't go the way you want, that you find adventure each new day and marvel at the wonders of creation which constantly present themselves to you, that you never give up on yourself when others turn away or do not understand, that you are attentive to the health of your body, mind, and spirit, that you take risks and accept the growthful challenges that come to you, that you draw on your inner strength and resiliency when you are in need, that you carry peace within yourself allowing it to slip into the hearts of others so that our planet becomes a place where violence, division, and war are no more. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face radiate with joy because of you and God's voice speak to you of a never-ending love, a love given just for you. May you be reminded that wherever this year takes you, God goes with you. Amen.